All right. Um, the hopes is if uh, during the course of the day, this presentation will be fairly effective in regards to uh, if you've read my book before that. But if not, you'll be able to dig right in and, and use much of this stuff. This kind of builds on it, but it ultimately isn't isn't an end-all, be-all. And you'll get just as much of the information if you haven't. And uh, I consider it advanced programming principles. Maybe some won't. But ultimately, you're, you've heard a lot about stress this last week. And the hopes is that we can uh, help you kind of direct that stress in the right, uh, I should say, in the right uh, application. And with that application, the theory is based upon advanced biochemical programming, because your programming is eventually has to turn to the biochemical aspect, which and then as the future goes on, we're going to have to dig into gene expression and all that um, based upon your programming. And there's a lot of smart people that don't know anything about athletics, but we're going to have to turn to them to, to get the ideas. Because even in molecular biology, in that field, they're actually finding out that physiologists don't have it right. So, I mean, the future of where everything goes is basically based upon science, and then you're going to have to try to apply that science. Now, the two things I, I can grasp a hold of is the intensity and the duration should be the absolute focal point and the considerations of all your training that day. And the specificity of exercise in your program is absolutely critical to that adaption. And I'll explain that thinking later. I won't spend too much time on that. Uh, I believe you've probably heard enough on adaption and specificity. Um, there's are some of the references there. Um, I will place this on my website. I'll give it to Jay right after this, the reference version. of. And I, I knew the slides when you were going to get them. You wouldn't be able to read the references. So I'm going to give a whole page version of PDF. You can post it on the website. And I'll post it on mine to download. So keep that in mind. Again, the intensity and the duration is key, especially for the biochemical aspect of training. So to keep this in mind, you must train all your systems, all your organs, the plastic structures of your metabolisms, the grouping of cells, and the cells at the same stress. Results are going to be deep adaptions. And when I say that, um, well, I'll get to it. With less negative stress response because of the less stress on the functional reserves of adaption energy. So your ability to adapt to handle stress, you can actually, if you make the stress very specific, and we've all heard that, but yet you have to think and believe that you're going to regulate your stress so that the organism uses all its energy to adapt to a very specific stress. For example, if you pull the organism in multiple directions, so I use the example, if you're training for a triathlon and a powerlifting meet, it doesn't work, does it? Because you're pulling too many directions. So the opposite of that theory then would be to go in one specific direction for a period of time or a day or a workout and ultimately make sure the organism, organism, the lungs, the heart, the kidneys, the liver, the nervous system, everything's adapting to the same stress on that day. And, and how do you regulate that within one workout is the question. And essentially you, you have to control the time that which you train per each set. So if today, for example, when I walk into my workouts, if my athletes were there and they're doing an advanced strength training workout, the set is going to be between either 7 or 10 seconds. There's a reason for that. So you don't do a set that lasts 20 seconds. It's a completely different adaption to a set that's going to last 7 seconds. Okay? So basically, I'm just taking the intensity and the duration and focusing on one general adaption so that the body can then handle more stress because it's very specific and it turns and goes into, um, and it'll actually heal and recover basically at a higher rate than if you did multiple stressors. So here's some things to keep in mind. Training at high speeds, intensive loads, coming by the largest changes in the nervous system apparatus, the muscles, the CNS, myelination, you know, sarcoplasmic reticulum, especially the myoglobin, which, which helps with oxygen within the cell on the cellular level. Now, how do you train, increase the uh, myoglobin of the cells? You essentially train at high speeds, high velocities. And I'll get to that in a little bit later, but at extremely high speeds, high velocities. Um, also, there, there's folks, what we have to realize is there's not one method that only increases myoglobin. There's not one method that only increases um, the uh, myelination. There's not only one method that increases uh, the mitochondria. If you take drugs, you add drugs in this scenario, you get all kinds of changes. So you just, you have to understand that what we're finding out with science, 
There's not just one method that does one thing. There's an adaption principle. And the best is, how can I get those principles all lined up in the same order? Again, through intensity and duration. Now, whether you use block method or the conjugate method, just remember you can always set your particular day at what method you want to train, whether it be 10 seconds, 5 seconds, 3 seconds, whether it be 20 seconds, maybe your sets are 30 seconds that day. So biochemically, uh, since biochemically adapted changes do not develop simultaneously, oxidative, uh, blocks of oxidative lactate, alactic work is needed. Most of this can be done in the off season. I referenced some people right there, Russians. Uh, you'll see the Russian references periodically through here. You can look at uh, an Ishern's book. It's right back there. Yosef has it ultimately. But you have to understand that there's, again, history will show us that the more specific we can make the stress, the farther you push the organism to the direction you want it to be. And again, by time, essentially, that's the best way. Now, the, today we'll assume all of my intensity is at 100%. We, we train, we call it our death ground. This is what you're going to try to push the athletes to. When Cortez came over to raid the Aztecs on the beach that night, you probably heard this story. There was, there was talk about him. There was only 5,000 of his warriors, and they were talking about going back. They had a quarter million Aztecs to fight. And he said, well, he went over and he burned the ships. And he told them, look, you, this is your death ground. You have no other options but to fight like your life depends on it. So this is the 100% we're talking about, all right? Um, you can't always reach it, but that's what we refer to. Now, the duration, the, set, the time per set. Set durations be, will, uh, should be maintained while focusing on sports-specific training. So I'll show you how to get to that. I got, I got videos of exercises, sequencing, that you'll be able to use to take home today. So basically, you're saying, okay, I'm going to train with, with time. Time is very important because it increases, I'll show you what it does. It increases the density per set. If you, now, I'm not talking about the general person, and maybe you are, maybe I am if they're a competitive person, okay, but my athletes, this is what I saw with them, um, the density, the amount of time, and the intensity, the density and the intensity of the sets went up when we started training uh, uh, with time. Competitiveness, um, uh, ASFM method that I came up with training, uh, it corresponds with the dynamic correspondence of Bonner Chuck, his books are back there. Uh, the regulation of specificity in sports in regards to energy system and the duration. So then if, for example, if I want to train a sprint swimmer for getting stronger, he's under 10 seconds. And then if I want to train him more specificity for a sport, I would actually train him over 10 seconds if he's got a uh, David Plummer who has a, uh, uh, he won the nationals last year, beat the Olympic silver medalist, uh, former world champion at nationals last year. He came out of retirement. He's hoping to make London this year, which, I mean, he should. Um, we're manipulating his times in his weight room to actually mimic what he does in the pool so that, again, he doesn't do, let's say, an aerobic set in the pool and comes and does sets under 10 seconds in my weight room, okay? Because if you time those, if you, if you work together on that, you'll get deeper into where you want to go with less energy wasted. Um, the regulation of the biochemistry of training, we'll get into that. Now, I'll start over with the, the density per set. Basically, what you have is, I, I saw, you can roughly see a 50% increase in density. Uh, all I did the first time I worked with my athletes was, for example, I took an um, athlete with 100 pounds, uh, let's say on his dumbbell bench press for eight reps. It took him 12 seconds to do it. I prescribed eight reps. It took him 12 seconds. He did, ended up doing um, 800 pounds in 12 seconds. Then I told him, okay, I want you to go for 12 seconds. And he turned around and produce 12 reps, okay? So you see the amount of increase. It's actually a 35% increase on the 100 pounds, or using the 100 pound dumbbells, in the same amount of time. So that you are providing him with the same amount of time, but now that you went with time, he's trying, being a competitive person, he's trying to get, you've just raised the intensity of that duration, okay? <clears throat> so what I did to have them keep track of that on my workout sheets, you can see here, all I did was, uh, all my exercises over here, I know it looks confusing, I'll talk you through and actually build you a quick program during this presentation here later. You can see, um, you can see the T, so let's go to the second box, drop, uh, squat drop jumps, you can see T for time. And then it mimics that over there, so the only thing they're recording is if they break their PR. 
So you can see the athlete, he may keep this workout for two weeks. This is a Monday workout. He may go over there and record his best time. So then the next time he walks in, he knows what his best time was at that weight. And it's actually really easy. If you use Excel, this program, all you got to do is go up there, put in the right formula for that one, and draw a line down and it will mimic. You don't have to retype everything. Excel does it for you. But you can see the athletes will keep track. We don't, we don't keep track of it ourselves. We just throw it out. Okay, but they will be able to see what they did the last time and keep pushing themselves at 100%. And if, this, if training with time doesn't, doesn't work, at least you're getting more intense work out of your athletes. So that, that's what works. I don't know if it's the time, okay, yet, but ultimately it's the, well, I know it's the time, but ultimately the intensity goes up. 